Can you hear me okay? Oh, this is so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was the first time that I tried. I tried to play the audio through my Bluetooth, but it really didn't work. Yeah. Perfectly. <laughs> okay. Oops. Okay. Now, now that we're here, let's officially go ahead and start with you introducing yourself, telling us about yourself, your age, educational background, and something interesting that you wanted to share with us. Okay, so my name is Elizabeth Hentas Norototer, and I am 22 years old. I am currently studying Chinese studies at the University of Iceland, and I am in my second year. I was also going to try out for doing a Japanese bachelor at the same time, but I noticed it was just too much. And I think it's really important when you notice it's too much for you to just pull back a little bit. But for education wise, I have also traveled a lot abroad and especially in Japan, I went to language schools and I started doing that from the age of 17. So every single summer from there, I went to Japan for language schools and I saved the money up for myself, by myself. So it was something that I was always really proud of. And I think that's a really fun fact about me. <laughs> wow, that's really amazing. And why Chinese studies of all the other courses? So I think I was originally, I was not going to go to university. I was going to be like, bye Iceland, I'm not going to be here anymore. <laughs> so my oh, okay. was to just go abroad. But then I just coincidentally saw Chinese studies and something just awoke in me. And I was like, you know what? I'm actually going to just sign up for this because I was also participating in the Miss Universe, uh, Miss Universe Iceland 2019. And because of that, I wasn't going abroad during the summer. So I just decided, like, why not just stay for one year in university? And if I don't like it, I can just quit and go abroad. But if I do like it, I'm receiving education and learning something new. So... I thought it was just kind of a win-win situation. Exactly. So thank you so much for sharing that. And you initially competed in Miss Universe 2019 and finished as first runner-up. So what yes. made you decide to enter beauty pageant? So I think the first thing that kind of influenced me is that I saw some pictures of my mom. She had participated paid in some local Icelandic pageants because pageants used to be kind of a thing here in Iceland in the older times, but then they just fell out of fashion, I guess. But then there was also my cousin who had won Miss Reykjavik 2008. And I remember being a kid and I was like, my, my cousin is Miss Reykjavik. And I was really proud of that. But then there's definitely the movie Miss Congeniality that I thought was so badass. I used to recreate the scenes. So then it was just curiosity from pageants because I think here in Iceland, it's a little bit misunderstood. So it's all of those things bunched together that made me want to do this. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I believe everybody loves the Miss Congeniality movie. So good. Starring Sandra Bullock, especially all of us here in the pageant world. Yeah. So thank you so much for that. And I have read online, I'm not sure if this is confirmed or not, but I have read online that you were added as a new competitor for this year, then yeah. competed again and won the title. So can you share to us how did it happen yeah. and what made you decide to compete again? So at first I was not going to compete because I was just going to go abroad during the summer and stay abroad. But then because of COVID, I, that dream kind of went away. And I was kind of lost of what I should do because my exchange program that I wanted to do in university for this autumn semester, it was also not going to happen anymore. So I was just really, really lost. And then Dishta <laughs> told me to do it again. So I decided to do it. <laughs> and you won the title. Yeah. So it was so, a good thing that came. What do you do? Exactly. So how does it feel? Because there are many contestants this year that were appointed because they were first one up. But in your case, you competed again. So what, yeah. made, what do you think is different from competing again rather than being... I mean, I'm not saying that being appointed is wrong, but what do you think makes it different than, being, than competing again and win rather than being appointed? So for me, when I lost last year, I actually was not that disappointed. And it m may sound really strange when I say that, and people often don't believe me. They're like, oh, you're lying. But Bishpa and I were always close from day one. So when she won, I was just so happy and content with the whole process because I made it really high. But 
the person that won was someone who truly deserved it. So I was just really happy with everything. But then competing again this year, I felt so much pressure. That is when I started feeling a, mon a lot more nervous. So last year I was just, you know, enjoying the ride and feeling myself. But this year I was a lot more serious and I was a little bit stressed even at times because this, either I would win, be in the same place or do lower. And that's not necessarily the right mindset to have when you do these things, but that is unfortunately unfortunately the one that I had a lot of the time so I always had to pick myself up again and be like you know you're doing this for you even if you don't win this time it's okay then you're just done with this and it's all good but especially standing on the stage when it was me and my first runner-up I was really nervous because I was standing even on the same side as I stood when I was facing Dishta so I was just like oh this is deja vu bad deja vu but still good deja, good deja vu so it was really nerve-wracking this time around so I believe everything is really aligning for you and it's meant for you because you have won this time. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, so this, is really <laughs> maybe this is really your time. Yeah. And I, have, I know you have clarified this to me before, but I wanted it to hear from you exactly. Mm -hmm. I've, read, I've read that you have been doing volunteer work in South Korea. Can you tell us something about that? So I would not say that it was volunteer work exactly because in my opinion, when you or the way I think of volunteer work is when you're going to a charity or something like that and doing work there. But in my case, it was more like work exchange, I would say. So I was just trying to find the, the best way for a student and a broke student at that to travel around the world and be able to experience new things. And I found this great homepage that had worked exchange. So what I did, I went to South Korea and for my accommodation, I was just working there for about two, three hours a day for free. And that was, you know, working for my stay there. So yeah, it's kind of volunteer work, but still not volunteer work because I'm getting something out of it. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, how long did you stay there? So I've been to South Korea three times in total. I always, when I went to Japan, I also went to South Korea. And I would say I stayed there for about two to three, two months, about a year. So I spent my time in Japan and South Korea, eight months in total in each year, I would say. And that experience was really great. So if somebody wants to do that, I also really recommend that because it's a great way to travel on a budget. Exactly. You're traveling, you're learning, and you're working at the same time. Yeah, exactly. That's really good. And now, Birta was able to pull a top 10 placement for your country last year. As her successor, and we're talking about pressures earlier, do you feel pressure in pulling another placement for your country? So for Birta placing top 10 last year, I think... It's such an amazing thing and it's such an accomplishment, especially from Iceland because we're a small country and we're not that big on pageants. But the exactly. fact that Birta made it to top 10, it has been such a great thing. And also for me, because now there's extra attention on Iceland that wouldn't have been if Birta hadn't made it to top 10. So when it comes to pressure, I do not feel that much pressure to place again because I think it was such a miracle and great thing, but I'm going to go there and do my absolute best that I can. And I'm just going to make people proud. That's what I decided to do. And I think this year's contestants, the girls are so amazing and great. And I have no idea on what could possibly be the outcome of everything, but I'm just overwhelmed in general, that Birta made it so high. And I'm so thankful for her to, you know, set a, such a good example for Iceland. And I want to do my best to make that example happen again. And I believe it would be amazing to see your country placed back to back because of you. Yeah, I, I'm, it's That's my goal. I'm going to try to make that happen. <laughs> Yes, and right now with all this, as I said earlier, with what you did in Miss You Update, you have been gaining a lot of attention, a lot of mo more support from people. So that's a good thing. That's really a good start for you. And your country, Iceland, isn't really big when it comes to beauty pageants. So how do you think you can help inspire more candidates to join and compete in Miss Universe Iceland? 
So something that I was actually a little bit surprised about is that Icelandic people were also looking at my Instagram story. And it was mainly just people I knew, no, of course. But one sent me a message like, I was never interested in following anything that happens around Miss Universe. But because of you today, I'm actually interested. So kudos to you, kid. And I was so happy that, you know, hearing that because I think setting a great example and showing what you are doing with your title that is something that can encourage girls and women to join the pageant because I think here in Iceland there is a certain mindset when it comes to it and a lot of people are curious but not curious enough to experience it themselves so I think setting just a good example and showing what I'm doing can really encourage girls to come and join. Okay thank you very much and Here's another thing. When IMG took over Miss Universe, and we have seen a trend of advocacy being added to Miss Universe and all different kinds of awareness being raised. So what would be the advocacy that you would like to bring to Miss Universe? I think the advocacy that I want to bring to Miss Universe is definitely the importance of cultural awareness and cultural understanding. Because that is something that I have just experienced myself coming from a very homogenous and small country with our own culture. And I have experienced my culture being a little bit, you know, looked down upon. Not necessarily, like, I'm not sure how to exp explain it, but I have felt, ex you know, embarrassed about my culture when I was a kid. And I noticed, especially in 2020, that everything is connected by the internet. So we have this feeling that we know what's going on in other countries and we know the culture and so on. But in reality, we don't understand each other maybe and there might be many under misunderstandings simply because of cultural differences and languages and I think it's so important for us to just be sympathetic towards one another when it comes to that case because just from traveling around the world myself I've experienced that often the idea that I had had first was simply a stereotype or something that I just heard wrong so that's what I want to bring to Miss Universe to you know, my advocacy is going to be because I want people, I want to try to inspire people to get to know each other a little bit better. And it's just simply from my own experience of being able to see that I was wrong, you know, and it's such a good feeling to know that I grew from learning from that experience. And speaking of learning, since you and Birta are close, is she giving you any tips that would definitely help you in your Miss Universe? journey yeah Birta has been helping me a lot after I won the title and I'm just so thankful because I have a close friend that has already gone through everything so she's giving me all the tips uh, that she can give and I'm just so thankful for her to be there to help me through this whole process because once again it's not a you know not everybody gets to experience this and I'm so grateful that I have a close person to me that can help me through this process and guide me along the way. Exactly, because the real people who can really help you are those people who've been there. Exactly. So Birta was able to reach top 10, top 10 last year. She became one of the heavy favorites. And it's amazing because most of your input will come from her. Exactly. Now, let's have some, more, some pageant questions here. Hmm. Question number one. Do you think staying at home and following health protocols during a pandemic can be considered a heroic act? So when it comes to staying home during the pandemic, I think it's really important for us who can do that. But not everybody has the privilege to stay at home. Some people's occupations did not turn electro electronical when the COVID happened and they still had to go outside and work. But I think it's so important that we try to do the best with the situation. So if we do have the opportunity and we are in the positions to be able to stay at home, I think it is really important that we do so to stop the spread of the virus. Okay, thank you very much. And in connection to this pandemic, what do you think is, what do you think other countries can learn from your country in dealing with a pandemic? I think Iceland did really well at the beginning of the pandemic by we immediately set down the two meter rule and everyone kind of the whole community, it just, you know, all schools and works, they just stopped for a while. And 
that was the time that we used to kind of get ourselves together to realize what we were going to do about the situation. But one thing that Iceland could have definitely done better was start wearing masks sooner. But then when the second wave arrived, then it has been absolutely mandatory to wear masks everywhere for a long time now. And even though the case is or the virus is under control now pretty well, like when I did my Miss you, miss you updates uh, takeaway. Yeah. Then I uh, there were only four new cases, so now it's really slow. But they have not relaxed any of the what do we call it in English? The you know restrictions Protocol. that they, yeah protocols. They have not been relaxed, and I think that is really good. And that's something that yeah. Iceland is doing well. Exactly, because something could just happen even with a few number of cases. So that's really good, yeah. and also. When it comes to this pageant, especially with how IMG has evolved with Miss Universe, it's very important for our contestant in selecting a winner as well on why should you be the next Miss Universe? Why should we choose you? That is a ver- but because that is a very important thing. Others just give just very basic reasons, which as followers of the pageant doesn't really, we, you know, we back out right away. I mean, we think it's not enough. Now, in your case, Why do you think you should be the next Miss Universe? So, like you said earlier, when it comes to that question, I I think it's really important that the woman who wins knows why she wants to be Miss Universe. And in my case, what I talked about earlier, it's mostly like what I want to bring to the world is more empathy towards one another, and I want to show up as an image of that. Because I think it's so important that somebody shows you, you know what, I had this mindset before, but we grow and we learn. And especially just to, I think it's really important that the woman who wins is someone that can spread her message well. And she can shine and make people feel what she is saying. And I definitely feel like I am a woman that has those qualities. So I think I would make a good Miss Universe when it comes to that. Okay, thank you very much. It's really, really good. And another thing, just a connecting question to that question. People have been saying that it's very important that you need to be relatable as a Miss Universe. Now, what makes you think that you would be relatable? What makes you relatable to the people who are following Miss Universe? So I think what makes me relatable to other people is just because we we are all human at the end of the day and. I myself, I know I make some mistakes and I'm not afraid to share my mistakes or talk about them because it's just something that helps us grow into the person we are today. And I think something that makes me also a really comfortable character be- to be around is that I simply like talking about the things I'm interested in and I o- I'm also really passionate about a lot of things and I love learning to get to know other people. And I think that's a quality that a lot of people have in this world, because otherwise, why would we be the society that we are today with the, all of the social media going everywhere and so on? So I think I am a really relatable character because I'm also just really down to earth coming from Iceland, I think. <laughs> Small country, but a huge universe. <laughs> Exactly. And I have remembered that earlier this year, our country, the Philippines, made a movie that was shot in Iceland. And after that, the movie became viral. And then everybody was going crazy about how beautiful Iceland was. I forgot the title. I tried to you remember have to let me it. Know. But... You have to message me later. I have to yeah, I will send that. you a message later. Yes, it was a Filipino movie. It was a romantic movie that was shot in Iceland. And everybody went crazy. And then all the travel websites in the Philippines all featured trips on trips to Iceland, all the promo trips, because it became really, really viral. Not just the story, but the entire country. It's I'm... so beautiful. I even watched it myself. It was really good. Oh my God. I'm so happy to hear that. I have to look at that movie. I love when other countries come and do some movies or something like that about Iceland. Like last year, America came and... <laughs> <laughs> or like Love in Iceland is a movie called and it's really funny because it's just really out of context it makes Iceland look like a rural village but <laughs> I really want to see I, what the Philippines did with the movie and how they showed Iceland I'm yeah really I will Iceland. I will definitely find it after our interview and also this I'm very sure you're familiar with the Eurovision Song Contest the one that Netflix yes. did 
Yeah, <laughs> the funny movie featuring your country. I mean, that I really love that because I'm also a follower of the Eurovision Song Contest, and that really made me happy watching that movie. Yeah, me too. I especially loved some of the most ironic scenes, like with the elves or with the whales coming up. I was, yes. I loved it. I found it so funny. But that's like a comedic skit about Iceland. But I really enjoyed I the mean, movie. But was was is that true that you all believe in elves? We do believe some of us in elves. I I was thinking like uh, during my takeover, I wanted to talk a little bit about it, but I had already done so much. But we, the folklore in Iceland has trolls and elves and hultufolk, which is kind of like fairies. So it's we have quite a rich culture when it comes to that things. Because, I mean, when I was a kid, I was going around looking into rocks and looking for elves. So I was, I'm not going to say that they don't exist. But I haven't had any proof. But I haven't had any proof that they don't exist at the same time, you know? So I'm just kind of... Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that was re- that's really cute though I, as, when I was following the movie I mean what an amazing culture it is it's really fun watching the movie and learning more I mean I'm not really sure how much of it was true but still fun to watch and I'm really glad we see more of Iceland especially on the movie that I talked about the Filipino movie I promise to send you the movie yeah, later I'll just have, have to search to. that I have to look at it yes yes I will now Just a random question here with IMG taking over and many people have are loving you actually because of how you speak, how you present yourself. IMG has really focused on contestants that are really good in public speaking because during the Trump era, we are focused more on the catwalk, on the evening gown. But when IMG took over, it's giving highlights to ladies who are good in public speaking. So are you okay with that? What is your thought? What are your thoughts about it? giving importance to public speaking. Yeah, I am really comfortable with speaking to people, especially as my past is a tour guide. So I'm used to talking really loudly about over crowds and so on. <laughs> uh, but in general, I, I do agree with that message that I think it's really important for the woman to be able to speak and tell her own opinions of things because that is the person that is going to leave the biggest impact on people. So I think that is really important. And I am really grateful that that is a focus now because that is something that I am really uncomfortable with. I just have to fix my cat walk a little bit. But then <laughs> I'm going to get good with it. Yes, because I believe cat walks are just, I mean, those, are, those skills can be learned with proper training and everything. But As what I've always said in my vlogs, interview is the most difficult thing to train because you really need to have this in order for this to work. Exactly. So I really appreciate ladies who can really speak very, very well. So thank you very much for sharing and spending your time with us. And right now, before we end, because those are the questions that I got, we still wanted you. We still wanted to have a sneak peek on how you introduce yourself to Miss Universe, just like what they do. So your name and then your country. Oh, so you want it? Okay. <laughs> Just like how they do it in Miss Universe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna. Uh, 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 okay. Elizabeth Hulbas Nordotter, 22, Iceland. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. And how do you pronounce that last name again? Snorra Dochter. I am sorry? Snorra Dochter. Snorra dot here. Yeah. So in Iceland, we don't good. have family names. So Snorra is my dad's name, and I'm Snorra's daughter. So that's basically the name. Oh, okay. So yeah. thank you very much for sharing that. And final message to the people who are supporting you and will be supporting you to your journey to Miss Universe 2020. Thank you so much for everything, especially the message- messages that you have sent. I have been reading them all. I'm trying to reply. But thank you so much for the warmth and showing interest in Iceland and me as a person. The support you're showing is immaculate and I can really feel it. So thank you so much. Thank you very much as well. Again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for joining me. And as we always say, we will be keeping an eye on you until the finale of the Miss Universe 2020 pageant. And right now, I wish you all the best. I wish you all the luck. And hopefully... Iceland will continue its placement in Miss Universe. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so We much. We wish for that to happen. Me.
Thank you so much for having me. I'm very me. happy. You know what? I'm very, very happy that you're here. It really means a lot because it's very important that we get to know more about the ladies, not just by photos, not just by videos. We need to learn more because there are many things we don't know about the contestants. So it, this is really one way for us to know more about you. And I'm very, very thankful. And I'm pretty sure that most of the people that are watching are also thankful to know more about you. Thank you so much for having me and giving me this opportunity to get allow people to get to know me better. So, win-win. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, exactly. So, thank you so much. And may you have a wonderful day ahead of you. So, and just good luck and do your best in the finals. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. And have a wonderful day again. You too. Bye. <laughs> yes, thank you.